Hey guys, so I'm in uh, Japan. It's summertime. That's why I'm sunburned and uh, you know and quite sweaty. Uh, very humid in Japan in the summertime. Humid all over all over Southeast Asia in the summertime. I'm in Mount Yoshino and Y O S H I N O, and I'm actually doing this video because I've got a. I'll show you um, a steep hike about two kilometers uphill, and I'm taking a break. Um, first piece of advice, um, if you're considering places to go, uh, I prefer World Heritage Sites far more than UNESCO Sites. UNESCO is kind of like the popular kid, um, is not as discriminating when it comes to setting up these kinds of places. I mean, this is kind of like a mountain village, um, and it's beautiful. Uh, signs are everywhere, they're everywhere you might expect, um, you know, and, and that's typical of almost all the World Heritage Sites I've been to. The UNESCO sites just seem to have a lot more, uh, more of an online presence, but not so much in terms of, um, you know, actual people on the floor, on the ground, that try to make sure things work. In my opinion, other, other people may disagree. Um, but this is a really cute place. Uh, so you can see that it's, it's set up in a way that, you know, you're not gonna get hungry or, or thirsty. Um, and here's a map right here. I, I like the sign over here that says uphill uh let's see if i can show that to you there you go uphill uh that's where i'm going and so um the reason i, I you know a couple of things the reason i came here is because i actually thought kyoto was a place to go for hiking in japan but really mount nishino blows it away and i'm pretty sure probably mount fuji as well but i haven't been there um and so you know i, I always wanted to kind of do these sorts of things because i figured when i'm 60 or 70 because i'm i'm a bit heavy on the heavier side uh, at 250 uh, pounds that, you know, I, I might not be able to do something like this. Uh, but I've seen, I, I've been seeing a lot of grandmothers and grandmas and even in flip-flops going up and down. So maybe there's, there's hope for me yet. Um, the other issue is that, you know, when you're traveling for months, months at a time, it, it's kind of a, it's kind of nice going someplace uh, that gives you a, a sense of accomplishment, even, even if, if it is self-manufactured. And like I said, you've got this, this town is amazing. You've got oh, taxis everywhere. Uh, these are some workers. They're probably doing either some restoration on, on, on the different shrines all over this area. Um, so number one, World Heritage over UNESCO. Number two, I would say try to come out to these places because you know you don't know how quickly they're going to become commercialized. Um, you know, whenever a place gets too popular, it's almost not worth going to um, just because it, it starts to look the same. And a lot of cities now have the eye, which is a Ferris wheel. They almost all have them, and it's just really annoying, even though it does create an easy commercial center for small shops and, you know, and so on. But, you know, I get the sense that a lot of those places are manufactured for tax revenues as opposed to, you know, the, the traveler experience. Um, but, you know, having said that, you know, I really do like cities. I mean, Tokyo is one of my favorite cities. And when I first started, travel started traveling, you know, the view over Victoria Harbor in Hong Kong, um, it, it, it was was just amazing. Uh, and if you know anything about cities, you know, Hong Kong was one of the most, most densely populated cities in, in, in the whole world. It's got buildings, skyscrapers, probably marking, you know, at least half the city, uh, half the state. Um, and so you've got these, uh, or special administrative region, as what, what the technical, technical term is. Um, so I would say that, you know, having, you know, having traveled a little bit more since then, uh, I really like the idea of coming, coming to these kind of quiet cities, towns, um, and I've, I'm focusing more on nature uh, simply because it's cheaper. Uh, Japan is an expensive place to visit, um, but also because, you know, not only does it give you a sense of accomplishment, but, um, you know, it, it's just kind of, um, it's something that can't be, um, there's only so much you can commercialize nature before it goes away. And, you know, you're look, let me just try to show you a view over here before I let you go. Um, let's see, see how far up I can get over here. Hopefully, you know, it's about four o'clock over here. Maybe I'll even see a sunset. Okay, that might be a nice view. So, you can't really see it at this angle, but it is a really nice view. Um, so I'd say, you know, if you want to come to Japan, uh, the nature would be, should be one of your, one of your top reasons. Um, in fact, to be honest with you, after about a week of it, a week of seeing so much foliage and so many beautiful nature scenes, I'm actually getting sick of it. 
I said, it's just too much beautiful stuff uh, in nature. So I'm, I'm really hoping I go to a city to get some balance. Um, so come on down. And uh, like I said, it's just a nice place. Hopefully, hopefully you'll get to visit.